One of the biggest takeaways from the Ferguson protest has been that our local police forces have been oversupplied with war toys, and they're more than willing to use them. Officers now have access to armored Humvees, assault rifles, science fiction caliber weapons designed to cripple our ability to peacefully assemble. Joining me to talk about this is Howard Nations. Howard, everybody's hearing about the 1033 po program, the big giveaway. It's it's scary when you start analyzing what it's uh, what's resulted in, isn't it? It really is. You know, contrary to what you're hearing on television these days, the 1033 program was not a response to 911. Uh, this was launched in 1997. It was approved by the Congress. And the idea was to give away military surplus because back in 1997, we actually had military surplus. And they were trying to give the military surplus to local law enforcement agencies. Since that time, there have been 17,000 agencies in all 50 states that have received a total of $4.3 billion in military surplus. Just last year in 2013, there was $500 million worth of military surplus uh, distributed. Uh, to the states. Howard, what is the best source of articles somebody could read on this if they wanted to understand 1033? Is there anything that you're relying on? Well, you know, the, the 1033 is that, what I told you about 1033, that's pretty much it. The, the effects of it, uh, you can see, uh, for example, in Georgia, you've had $200 million distributed to 600 agencies in Georgia. Doesn't, it occurs to me that maybe $200 million of federal taxpayer money could have been used a little bit better for education in Georgia. We've had ridiculous examples like Oxford, Alabama, 21,000 people population, $10.4 million in military surplus equipment. And in Rising Star, Texas, population 835 people. $3.2 million over 14 months. Now you have to admit, that they've been successful. There have been no terrorist attacks in either <laughs> Oxford or in Rising Star, Texas. Well, so it's no, been a no, no, wait. Program. Let's back up on that. First of all, again, you're talking about, I call it the Barney Five syndrome. The Absolutely. Barney Five syndrome is policemen who's never had any real training on things like minesweepers or sound blast cannons or AK 47s with wooden bullets or uh, uh, assault helicopters, that these, these Barney Five types are given all of this thinking that, well, gee whiz, any moment now, we're going to be invaded by Islamic terrorists. But yep. the truth is, there have been no ex Islamic terrorists, but there have been a lot of sovereign citizen terrorists, haven't they? We're right there in our backyard. They don't need all this to deal with sovereign citizens. Well, what broke this uh, lately into the press has been, of course, Ferguson, Missouri, where you had the first picture of the SWAT team sniper standing on an armored vehicle pointing a sniper rifle at peaceful protesters. And another officer pointing a rifle at peaceful protesters shouting, I'll kill you. Since the death of Michael Brown, you've had massive display of militarized force. You've had armored vehicles, tear gas grenades, assault rifles, and smoke bombs. And then in the Sunday New York Times, you had the photograph of a line of policemen Deadly weapons pointed at protesters. And the problem is you've got deadly weapons distributed and absolutely no training in the use and the protocol. You know, I was taught in the military to use the uh, M1A1 carbine, the M16, the M M1 rifle, and the 45 caliber. But before I ever was allowed to fire one shot with them, I could take them apart and put them back together blindfolded. I spent hours and hours on the range like other military people did. We knew not only how to fire them, we knew when to fire them. We had classroom protocols. None of that comes along with just sending out all this equipment to, as you say, the Barney, Barney Five contingent. Well, when, when Richard Nixon started this, as you point out, is it was says this is, we're gonna fight drugs with this. You know, we we need to give we need to give local police officers in cities where there's ten to fifteen thousand population, we need to give them a helicopter or we need to give them honest to God, I mean we're we're talking about mine sweeping attack vehicles. Now in a in a town of ten to fifteen thousand and then, as you point out, 9-11 takes place, and all of a sudden, there's a terrorist behind every corner. And these characters end up looking like ninja SWAT, you know, ninja SWAT commandos. I mean, dressed up in camouflage in the middle of the city. 
you know, where, where we used to have, I don't, I grew up in a lot of small towns and in our small towns, we had a police officer, he had a police, uh, a uniform on, he carried a sidearm, but he also had a relationship with the community to where he, he, he it wasn't always the risk of the community blowing up and going crazy because of the conduct of a particular police officer. But Howard, don't you believe that these guys become what they think about? If, you, if they want to dress up like Bruce Willis, the next thing you know, they're acting like Dirty Harry and Bruce Willis because they think about that all day. They, they see all these 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 things that they perceive as threats. Isn't there an element to that? If you dress like a SWAT member, you're going to act like a SWAT member, whether you're trained to be a SWAT member or not, basically. And there's an awful lot of evidence in, in Ferguson that this surplus equipment that was sent maybe with good intentions had not nearly enough training if any training at all. Uh, President Obama says that it's useful to revisit the funding uh, because it's good to get military gear where it's needed in the hands of our police officers, but we can't b blur the lines between the military and local law, law enforcement. That would be contrary to our traditions. He's absolutely right about that. It, this is this is a crazy. This program is is just gone crazy. Well, it's part of it, part of, of it is, part of it is, if you uh, really drill down on this one, it is that the arms industry makes so damn much money selling this stuff. Okay, so the military buys far more than they need. It, it look at the stuff we left on the desert in Iraq. I mean, just 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 rows of helicopters, rows of tanks, rows of all this multi-billion dollar equipment sitting there in the desert that we that's now is being cannibalized by the locals. So now the other thing they do is they send it back. Some of it makes it back to the United States. Military doesn't have anything they can possibly do with it. So Barney Five comes along and says, gee whiz, I'd like to dress up like a commando too. I'd like to dress up in a SWAT outfit. No, I don't have any training. But by God, I have the right to dress up like a ninja commando if I want. Isn't that kind of where this is all gone? Well, it is. It goes back to Eisenhower's warning us against the military industrial complex. Why do you give away $4.3 billion worth of military surplus? Because the only way you can replace that surplus for the people manufacturing it is to put it some use. Back in 1997, when we weren't in perpetual war, they started this program to get rid of a lot of military surplus equipment so they could, so they could sell the military some more. I mean, that's basically what it's all about. So now we have, uh, I guess you followed the story on the drone tasers, where they have drones flying over the crowds. They drop what they call ball tasers into the crowd, and 50 lines go out and tase people for as much as 20 seconds. They've got, uh, they've got a system, a microwave system, that they can blast 100, they, they can raise the skin temperature on a crowd to 130 degrees to where the people feel like they're burning up. That's done by microwave and they can do it across a broad expanse. They, they've also got a laser cannon that they can blast you with. And the problem is when they started studying when and how policemen are supposed to use this, the training is almost non-existent. Almost. You know, you and I have done programs before about all of these paramilitary units that are forming up in the United States and how they've become such a problem. This is paramilitary people funded by the government with a government sanction. It's, it's a terrifying situation, really. Well, it does, I don't see any end in sight. Again, I, I don't, you have a lot more faith in Obama than I do. I hear him talk about things, but then I turn the page three days later and nothing's really happened. And he's talking about doing something here. I'd be, I'd be frankly quite surprised if he does. Neither the Democrats or the Republicans want to take any action on this because Let me tell you who can take actions though, Mike. There are communities like Ferguson all over the United States. If you're tired of the injustice in their community, resort to democracy. Three things, voter registration, get out the vote, get African American candidates to run for mayor, city council, and school board. It's been 60 years since the Board of Education gave you a lot of rights in this country, recognized rights that you should have had all along. It's time to assert those rights. You do that at the polling place. Howard, thanks a lot. Appreciate you joining us, okay?